And this is about the January 6th investigation. The committee investigating the Capitol attack issued subpoenas to five sitting members of Congress. They're all Republicans. Let's bring up their names, their pictures. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Congressman Scott Perry of Pennsylvania, Congressman Andy Biggs of Arizona, Congressman Mo Brooks of Alabama, and Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio. There you see their faces. CNN's Ryan Nobles is following the breaking details for us. Ryan, uh, what do you know about this? Why these five congressmen? Well, Anna, this is a group of congressmen uh, that the, the uh, January 6th Select Committee has been very interested from almost the very beginning of their investigation. As we reported over the summer, uh, when they initially began looking for information related to what happened here on January 6th, they asked uh, the courts to preserve, uh, they asked uh, telecommunications companies to preserve the records of a number of Republican House members, and this group of five were in that discussion. And in addition, they sent letters to six Republican members, and this five uh, were all in that group asking them to voluntarily cooperate with the committee's investigation all six of them uh, and, and that included this five that have now been issued subpoenas all turned down that request but this is something that the committee has wrestled with for many many months they knew uh, that these Republican members were not going to be willing to participate in the investigation they were hopeful that they might be uh, but they were very concerned and they remain concerned uh, that these subpoenas may not be enforceable. There is not uh, a lot of precedent uh, to the idea of sitting members of Congress being subpoenaed for an investigation that's being conducted by fellow members of the same body. So uh, we've already seen the committee have some difficulty in enforcing subpoenas from members of the Trump administration. This is an entirely different conversation about actually sitting members of Congress. And of course, Anna, uh, the, the biggest name in this group is the current minority leader of the House of Representatives, Kevin McCarthy from California, uh, who is hoping and vying to be the next Speaker of the House should the Republicans take control of the House uh, in the fall midterm elections. Uh, McCarthy uh, has been a target of this investigation from the beginning. You'll remember that he stood in the way of attempts to create an independent bipartisan commission that would have been conducted outside the Congress. He also uh, stood in the way of the uh, attempts to create this uh, select committee, even pulling certain uh, members of the committee off of the initial formation of the committee after the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi uh, had blocked some of the names that he had added to it. Uh, so this is going to create a lot of tension, uh, potentially drama between Republicans and Democrats in the House. You know, it's already somewhat of a toxic environment here uh, in Washington, Anna. This is only going to add to that. And then the big question is, how does this impact their upcoming hearings that are scheduled to take place in June? Uh, you know, we're going to have to wait and see how these Republican members react to this very aggressive and extraordinary move by the January 6th Select Committee to issue subpoenas to sitting members of Congress. Anna? And that is a huge move. Ryan, please stand by. I want to bring in special correspondent Jamie Gangel. Jamie, are you surprised by this move? You know, th there's been a lot of talk about it. I think um, there were a lot of people who thought they were not going to do this. This is, as Ryan just said, it is a political tsunami. My understanding is that it is unprecedented to uh, subpoena fellow members of Congress. There are times when someone might be called in front of the Ethics Committee. But this is, as Ryan said, a very aggressive move. Uh, you have to ask a couple of questions. Practically, will it change anything? Will these subpoenas matter to these five Republican members, or are they going to ignore it? Will they be enforceable? You have to wonder whether the committee is doing this to make a point that they went as far as they could, or do they have some information that one or more of these five members might be willing to testify, that a member is going to say, I am not going to uh, defy a congressional subpoena, hmm. but um, so they want the cover of the subpoena, which we've talked about. But the political fallout of this, Anna, is huge because if the polls are correct and the Republicans take back the House in the midterms in 2020, this sets up the potential of the Republicans then 
going after the Democrats? Will they want to subpoena Nancy Pelosi or someone else? So I think there was a red line here that some members of the committee did not want to cross. They've decided they're going to cross it. And I'm hoping we can put that graphic back up with the, the pictures of all the members right. now who have been subpoenaed here so we can kind of tick through uh, what we know of some of their involvement. And of course, Kevin McCarthy's there at the top. He's the, the House Minority Leader right now. You'll recall we've previously reported about that expletive lace phone call between McCarthy and Trump that happened while the Capitol was under attack on January 6th. So uh, he has insight into perhaps Trump's uh, state of mind during the Capitol attack. When you look at Scott Perry, who's next on the list there. Um, he was asked, by the way, back in December to voluntarily sit for an interview, and, and he rejected that. So he had an opportunity to kind of tell his side of the story to the committee previously. But they want to talk to him about the attempted effort to install, you know, that former DOJ official Jeffrey Clark as acting AG. And it was that Jeffrey Clark who was willing, as our reporting goes, to go along with Trump's plan and the Trump ally plan to, you know, try to overturn the election. Andy Biggs there from Arizona. Um, we've learned he participated in meetings at the White House, had direct conversations with President Trump leading up to and during the Capitol attack. And, and there was a December meeting involving Andy Biggs in which uh, he and other members at the White House discussed uh, a plan to have Pence uh, take action to try to refuse to certify states' electoral votes. Mo Brooks, you'll recall, was at the rally before the Capitol attack and uh, had the now infamous quote about needing to start taking down names and kicking ass. And he told the crowd to carry that message to Capitol Hill. And then, of course, Jim Jordan there, uh, we've learned, even though he has tried to deny at one point, um, that he and Trump spoke at length on January 6th. And tur turns out it was around 10 minutes, at least, that they had right. a phone conversation that day. So um, a lot of questions about what was discussed in that phone call. Uh, please stay with me, Jamie. I want to bring in our legal analyst, Jennifer Rogers. And Jennifer, just your reaction to this, um, this action taken by the committee to subpoena fellow members of Congress. Well, it's a big deal, Anna, because they typically don't do this. There's a lot of kind of gentlemen's agreements with the way that congressional members treat each other, even when things get kind of nasty. And so the fact that they have gone ahead and subpoenaed these lawmakers really means that the gloves are off. I think that the, the folks in charge of the committee realize that no matter what they do, Republicans are going to do everything they can to thwart their mission of bringing the truth to the American people. They're going to try to retaliate if they take the Congress during the next session. So, you know, it really doesn't matter. And given that, I think that they're smart to go ahead and put the subpoena on these five lawmakers. I don't think that they will voluntarily comply, but at least they've taken that next step, which is important. I do wonder, Ryan Nobles, if you know, of these five, Mo Brooks might be somebody who is willing to cooperate, given he and Trump have had a recent falling out. Well, I think that's certainly part of what the, the committee is speculating. And, you know, there was this interesting period of time where after the former president rescinded his endorsement of Mo Brooks in the Alabama Senate race, uh, where Brooks was very critical of what Trump had to say and then even went uh, as far as to claim that Trump was asking him to find a way to rescind the election results uh, in September of 2021, long after the inauguration of Joe Biden had taken place. And the committee that it seemed to have some interest in him at that time, and he almost seemed open to that conversation. He shut that down right away uh, when they sent him a letter asking him to voluntarily cooperate. But what I think is interesting about the timing of all of this, Anna, is what we've heard from the committee uh, just in the past few weeks when we pressed them on this specific question of how you're going to get this information from these members of Congress that you're in search of. And what Benny Thompson told me about a week ago was that they've learned so much about this investigation from the time that it launched last summer, uh, over the period of time that they brought in hundreds of witnesses to be deposed by the committee, that they've collected these records like these text messages from Mark Meadows, the emails from John Eastman, the thousands of documents from the National Archives from the Trump White House. And what Thompson said is that they've learned information about the role that these members of Congress ha may have played in the days leading up to January 6th and January 6th itself, and the committee wants to give them an opportunity to explain that conduct. Uh, so to Jamie's point, 
uh, about filling in gaps here uh, and uh, you know asking them exactly what role did you play here almost trying to you know uh, offer them the opportunity to give their side of the story the committee believes that's important uh, and so that's part of the reason that they're issuing the subpoena because they've just been reluctant to do so and i think what the committee is saying here is we've got some information that is valuable to our investigation and you can either be a part of it or not be a part of it but we're going to present it anyway let me read the statement we just got from Chairman Benny Thompson on this committee, and, and I quote, the select committee has learned that several of our colleagues have information relevant to our investigation into the attack on January 6th and the events leading up to it. Before we hold our hearings next month, we wish to provide members the opportunity to discuss these matters with the committee voluntarily. Regrettably, the individuals receiving subpoenas today have refused and we are forced to take this step to help ensure the committee uncovers facts concerning January 6th. We urge our colleagues to comply with the law, do their patriotic duty and cooperate with our investigation as hundreds of other witnesses have done. Ryan Nobles, Jamie Gangel, and Jennifer Rogers, thank you all for joining us as we try to process this uh, developing story, the breaking news. Five members of Congress, all Republicans, now subpoenaed by the January 6th Select Committee. We'll stay on top of this and bring you more details as we're gathering additional information.